Hi students, welcome to my eco class. Today I am going to discuss about the derivation of long run average cost of derivation of long run average cost of long run average cost is the per unit production cost in the long run. It represents the per unit production cost at various level of output in the long run. This long run average cost curve can be derived with the help of the short run average cost curve. In order to explain about the derivation of long run average cost curve, I am going to draw a diagram here. This is the y axis. On y axis, we measure cost, and this one is the x axis. On x axis, we measure output. In the long run, the firm has sufficient time period to change all factors of production, or even it can change the scale of production. And uh, let us suppose that in the long run, the firm has uh, used uh, different three size of plants. This is the short on average cost of one this is another plant that form uses in the long run short on average cost of two and this is the third plant that form uses in the long run short on average cost of three in the long run, the firm does not stick with a single plant with the existing plant when it requires to increase in its output and uh, it can install different size of plant. Uh, suppose that the firm has installed three size of plants uh, in the long run. Uh, this uh, short on average cost curve uh, represents the per unit portion cost uh, from the use of uh, first plant or say small size of plant and uh, the short on average cost curve to represents the short run per unit production cost from the use of this second uh, size of plant or say medium size of plant and uh, this uh, short on average cost of 3 uh, represents the per unit production cost from the use of uh, this uh, third plant or this bigger size of plant. Suppose that the firm produces OQ one level of output. This level of output can be produced at AQ1 per unit production cost. And uh, if uh, there is increase in the demand for goods and services in the market, the firm decides to produce uh, more goods. Uh, uh, let us suppose that it decides to produce uh, uh, OQ2 level of output. This level of output can be produced uh, at BQ2 per unit production cost. We see that. Uh, now when there is increase in the level of output, the per unit production cost uh, uh, initially declines and uh, when it reaches to its minimum level thereafter the per unit production cost increases. Uh, we see that uh, at OQ2 level of output the per unit production cost is equal to BQ2. This uh, per unit production cost incurs for the use of uh, this first uh, size of plant and even if the firm installs a new plant and for the production of this OQ2 level of output, uh, the per unit production cost is equal to BQ2. That is why uh, the firm either can use this plant, first size of plant or this medium size of plant for the production of OQ2 level of output. If again uh, there is increase in the demand for goods and services in the market, uh, the firm would like to produce uh, some more goods uh, and services so that it can meet the uh, increasing demand for goods and services in the uh, market by supplying more goods. 
सपोज दैट द फॉर्म प्रोड्यूस इज ओ क्यू थ्री लेवल ऑफ आउटपुट दिस लेवल ऑफ आउटपुट कैन बी प्रोड्यूस्ड एट सी क्यू थ्री पर यूनिट पोर्सन कॉस्ट बाय इंस्टॉलिंग दिस मीडियम साइज ऑफ प्लांट इफ द सेम एग्जिस्टिंग साइज ऑफ प्लांट इज यूज्ड फॉर द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ ओ क्यू थ्री लेवल ऑफ आउटपुट यू सी दैट द पर यूनिट प्रोडक्शन विल बी मच मोर हायर here if we extend this line up to uh, the short on average cost curve which will extend to this point uh, and per unit production cost will be much more higher that is why the firm does not stick with the existing plant it is installs uh, medium or more advanced plant so that it can minimize its per unit production cost the same thing has happened here uh, for the production of oq3 a level of output the firm has installed new plant and been able to minimize its per unit production cost which is equal to cq3 again let us suppose that there is increase in the demand for goods and services in the market and the firm uh, decides to produce more goods uh, suppose uh, equal to oq4 oq4 this level of output uh in cost per unit production cost equal to uh, d q4 this per unit production cost um, in cost for the use of o q4 level of output from the use of this uh, second size of plant and even the firm installs this new size of plant for the production of o q4 level of output the per unit pro production cost will be e uh, d q4 here so for the production of this oq4 level of output the firm can either use this medium size of plant or can install this bigger uh, or size of plant and uh, either this or this size of plant can be used for the production of oq4 level of output again let us suppose that the firm decides to produce some more uh, goods and services say equal to oq5 and uh, this level of output can be you know, produced by using this uh, uh, medium size of plant or this bigger size of plant if firm decides to produce oq5 level of output by using this medium size of plant then and the per unit production cost will be much more higher that is why here the firm does not stick with this medium uh, medium size of plant Now for the production of OQ5 level of output, the firm is installs this new uh, plant so that it can minimize its per unit production cost. And here for the production of OQ5 level of output um, from the use of this third or bigger size of plant, the firm um, uh, has been able to minimize per unit production cost. It is just equal to EQ5 here. Uh, and uh, again if firm decides to produce some more goods say oq6 level of output you see that the per unit production cost even for the use of third uh, this bigger size of plant increases which is equal to fq6 this way in the long run the firm does not stick with a single plant um, if it requires to produce more and more goods and uh, services it installs more advanced uh, plant and start to produce uh, you know, from uh, that plant and that is why in the long run uh, there are a number of short run uh, average cost of which incurred from the use of uh, different size of plants with these different uh, short run average cost curve we can be able to drive the long run average cost curve but how Uh, to drive the long run average cost curve let us draw a smooth line uh, which is tangent to uh, the lower portion of each of the short run average cost curve here we see that the line is uh, a smooth line is tangent to uh, to short run average cost curve at point a and uh, here it is tangent to short run average cost curve uh, at point c and thereafter Uh, this line is tangent to uh, short run average cost curve at point e this is how by drawing a smooth line in such a way that is tangent to, uh, to the lower portion of each of the short run average cost curve we can drive the long run average cost curve 
दिस लॉन्ग रन एवरेज कॉस्ट कॉफ इन फैक्ट इन वेल ऑफ ऑल ऑफ दिस शॉर्ट रन एवरेज कॉस्ट कॉफ दैट इज वाई द लाइन इज एल्सो कॉल्ड इन वेल ऑफ कॉफ Uh, and uh, we see that uh, uh, even the long run average cost curve uh, gradually sloping downwards up to point C with the increase in output and uh, um, uh, with the increase in output the line is uh, sloping upwards uh, after point uh, C and uh, this line represents uh, the per unit portion cost cost curve represents per unit portion cost in the long run this is how with the help of different to short run average cost curve we can drive the long run average cost curve thank you